Okay, well, I'm turning over. Okay. Oh, oh hang on, since I'm right. Oh, that's... Guaranteed. <laughs> Say when. Okay. Running. 88 take one. Oh, so 88 take one. Professor, this is the most marvellous place to actually have a Department of Media and Art Studies. How did it come to be here and what it is that you actually do? Because it must be inspirational to see and be here. Well, it's our best standing set, this building, which, which is over 100 years old. We've been doing media here almost 20 years now and it's always been practice-based. So we've got over 200 students, undergraduates, on a course where half their work is in practice and the other half is in history and theory, and another 50 or so master's students. This started off as a women's college, and we've always been proud that our department has had a lot of female students. I think we may have to ask you to do that again, because we've had every single tribulation that it can be guaranteed, apart from the ice cream van. Is that all right for you, Jenna? Still running. Still running. Oh. I'm bored then. Right. Shall I cut? Cut, yes. Save film. Oh, we'll go 88 take. You're going to do the same thing, are you, Roy? Ray? Yeah, 88 2. Put it on 2 because it'll be okay. logged. Okay. Uh, all There's eyes no peeled from anything you could possibly see. Mm -hmm. There's one more aircraft, I think. Yeah. You've got the chalk. We have one of you. Sorry? Got chalk. That's yeah, good. Sure. Mm -hmm. good. If yeah. we're ready to go the second that John thinks it's okay, it'll be, give us the most time. Okay. So you, you can do it. Rolling, so you go whenever you're ready. Okay, should we turn over now? Okay. Say when. Running. Time running. 88 take two. Professor, this is the most marvellous spot to have a department of media and arts. It must be inspiration. What is it you do here and how does it work? It must be great. Well, we've been teaching media here uh, for about 20 years now. We have over 200 students who are on a degree which is half practice based. So they're making films, um, producing films, scripting films and so on. Um, we have another 50 master's students and it really is a wonderful place to be because a lot of the students live on campus so you get that real team feeling. Thank you. Cut. The theory is there's a BBC crew very small. It's usually six. In fact, you've seen it. This is the size of a BBC crew. It's handleable, it's friendly, we all know each other, we know what we do. We really don't have to tell each other what to do. The only one who gets told what to do is usually me, because I'm either in the way, in shot, out of shot, or actually sort of, well, not clearly telling them what I ought to do. Then they'll ask, and if it's wrong, they'll tell me which I rely on. The other great thing about it is that it all works on trust. The one thing you never do as a matter of absolute principle is you don't look down the eyepiece unless you ask. You ask out of courtesy and if it's so. If you ask too often it implies mistrust which of course since we get it away from the laboratories we don't know until we see it back. Otherwise we're all happy because if David says it's okay it's okay. If Bill says it's okay, it's okay. That's the way it works and it makes a big difference. When you have a hundred crew, you can't do that. But this, apart from aircraft noise, is ideally how it should be. It's obviously easier for everybody if we kept the same film stock all the time. Um, not least because otherwise the, the assistant is going to be constantly having to keep one mag with one lot and two mags with something else and and he's having to try and guess what, what we're going to be needing next. If, uh, and uh, if I suddenly say, look, I've changed my mind, I want the tungsten stock in there, or, or I want the daylight stock in, suddenly it's a panic into the changing bag to change it all again. So we've got three you, mags full of, full of uh, tungsten stock and he suddenly wants to go outside. So it can be a nuisance, that. I mean, you try to plan ahead, obviously, but mostly on, uh, on documentary work, we'd use a tungsten stock all the time. And, uh, I'd never use a daylight stock. I, I didn't use it. I used a daylight stock only the last few years doing drama um, when you're trying to get the optimum on daylight filming. And there was a daylight stock which was very slow actually. Only 25 ASA, wasn't it? That one. 
50, 50, 50 D. Yes. 50 D Kodak. Um, but it was very fine grain. It was a lovely stock. Yeah, it's beautiful. Yeah. Good contrast. Yes. But films, films always more forgiving. Negative films always more forgiving on uh, exposure and stuff because you can always save a bad situation. It's always better to. It's always better to overexpose than underexpose. You can always get back from from un overexposure, but you can't necessarily get back from underexposure. That's right. Yeah. Over, yes. Yeah. It's easier to, to to retrieve film that's overexposed than underexposed. Yeah. If you're underexposed, there's then there's nothing in the shadow. There's nothing to retrieve. But yeah. You which can is actually, sorry. Go on. Yeah. Which is opposite to video. So. Yeah, that's that's true. I think yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. First of all, I checked what roll number the sound recordist was on because I hadn't been with the camera crew just preceding this shot. So I want to keep up with what the roll numbers are equally for the, for the camera and the actual, and check the shot and, um, and sort of yeah, make sure that, you know, when, when the camera is running that I've got a, a, got a clock on it. And um, also, of course, if it's a good take or not. I mean, this was a very short, as you know, very short take, but um, sometimes they can go on up to 14 or 15 or 16, and therefore you do need a note of what the good one is. She's absolutely vital. She's the eyes, ears and diplomacy of the whole operation. If somebody has to go and silence a bunch of workmen with a pneumatic drill, you can bet your life Alex can do it. Um, this is the sort of... But it's also, you can only... Uh, do a job like this with a proper working index. Um, when the rushes come back or they're sent to London and you're in the middle of Algeria, you ring up and it says it's 40, whatever it is, you've got a problem. It's a hair in the gate or whatever. You've got that with you. I can't do that because in theory I should be listening and watching what's happening. That's why I've probably overshot that end board because I wasn't watching trucks going that way. With a little more practice, if we'd actually chosen the location a little more carefully with the recce, then you would know there is an aircraft flight path, there's a crossroads and things like that. But I can only really end this piece by saying the words of Sir Mortimer Wheeler, one of the world's best archaeologists, who said, time spent in reconnaissance is seldom wasted. <laughs>